ready to go, mates. Pretty much like any other kind of car. I actually don't think this car has gears. I think it might have just one to drive the wheels. So this car is very much like driving any other car. It starts a little differently and the, the gear shifter is a little different, but other than that, um, it's very familiar. Um, it's much quieter because it's electrically driven. And the one big difference is when I do this and press on the accelerator, I get this instant acceleration because it's electric. Um, the zero to 60 in an electric car is very satisfying. My understanding is water is the only emission from the vehicle. And um, one time it was dripping out, I was very tempted to put a cup under it and see what it tasted like, but I didn't get around to that. Yeah, I drove it around Ann Arbor quite a bit. This is the first time I've had it on the highway, and it's it's as I expected. It's very smooth, lovely to drive. <clears throat> it's also really nice driving around town, too. Because I'm in radio, I have super sensitive hearing, and I have to admit the, the whine, as opposed to the little rumble you get from a regular engine, that it has a higher pitched sound that bugs me. I think it was around uh, the mid 90s that Honda started really seriously looking at hydrogen and fuel cell vehicles. All right, so the big bump here, there's something underneath there, right? Yes, underneath there on the other side is the fuel tank that holds the hydrogen. It's pretty big, it's bigger than a gasoline tank would be, and so we have to design the vehicle to accommodate that. But once again, as an automaker, uh, we're not stupid. We're going to make sure the system is designed and engineered to take the hit in an accident. The car is fully crash tested. It's EPA certified. The same makers of these hydrogen tanks have been making them for compressed natural gas vehicles for over 20 years. And I think the first thing that you see is that it's not much different from what you would see under the hood of your gasoline car. You have a 12 volt battery to run the lights in your audio system, fuse box, a good old radiator cap, air inlet, even washer fluid for your windshield washer, and uh, an electric braking system. 10 years ago, if we were looking under this hood, it would be like duct tape and bailing wires. So it was all an engineering exercise. What you're experiencing here is more of a research project. This is set up as a research station for research vehicles. In Southern California, the hydrogen stations are at gasoline stations. People can go inside the convenience store, get their coffee, two dogs for a buck if that's what they want, and refill their car in about five minutes. There's about uh, 15 stations they can rely on today. Okay, back over here is the long trailer-like unit is our electrolyzer where we make the hydrogen from water. So we split water apart and make hydrogen. We compress it and then we store it in tanks. We also have a few fuel cells that we've been doing stationary fuel cell trials on. And then we also fill vehicles. Uh, actually, we use, we capture the solar energy to make the hydrogen, but it's not enough to make. So we're tied to the grid and the solar. So. As I accelerate, you'll see both green and blue. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The green is from the battery. Ah, okay. The blue is from the fuel cell. <clears throat> right. okay. And so it's constantly adjusting and optimizing what that mix should be, whether it's accelerating to pass a car or when you're driving it most in the city, using that battery a lot for just stop and go driving because that's free energy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, so that came as a result of decelerating and braking. 